Alright, so people ask about fleet editing or shift editing in this game all the time. And, to be honest, I don't really know how to explain it, so I'm just going to demonstrate making a fleet. Um, da -da -da. What's an interesting ship to use? An interesting ship to use is the Axford Heavy Cruiser. And we'll get rid of that frigate for now. Um, let's make this a fast cruiser. Uh, fast cruisers are an experimental... Well, sorry, fast ships in general are an experimental thing I've been working on. Which involve using no primary FR-4800 big reactor. And I'm just popping some micro reactors in because this big one, that's gotta go. It's going to be replaced by one of these. And I should probably throw on a reinforced TIC up there. Now the game will yell at me that I don't have anything in weapon groups because that makes it better for, um, what is it to say, um, command and controlling guns. Uh, that's how many shells it has. 450 is better. And you can see I'm using um, mostly uh, high explosive because high explosive is always better. Well, it's not always better, but it's usually the best choice. And of course, the game is complaining about me not using weapon groups because that's an option you can enable if you forget about it. But on a heavy cruiser, I just like to have individual weapons anyway. Because none of these point in the exact same firing arcs. So we got two FM two three zero. That's the small drive. Um, smaller drives are better at top speed than larger drives, and larger drives are better at turning. So I put an FM two five four zero Dragonfly to uh, offset the penalties to turn rate and angular thrust provided by the FM two three zeros because the FM500s are both too big to fit here and less effective for top speed. And I look at that and I see, uh, that's not very good. Um, so why don't we try the FM240? How's that look? Eh, better. See, none of these are particularly good because this thing only has three engines. And I'm just taking a sip of tea there breakfast in Paris, in case you were wondering. See, I know I need to beat a speed of 23.69 meters per second, and I can't do that with the FM2540, apparently. But I can get close. And this is still significantly faster than most heavy cruisers. If you notice, the top speed was 18 meters per second without any of these drive units. Not entirely sure if I'm going to go with an FM with the uh, 500 series Dragonfly or the 200 series. There are other engine options, um, reinforced drives, whiplashes are for turning, Dragonfly, whiplashes are for high speed, Dragonflies are for turning, Raider drives provide increased provide a decreased flank damage probability and increased linear thrust, so they're useful for accelerating faster, which is, to be fair, useful. They also increase your radar signature and don't provide very much power. And the aforementioned drives are available in small and large sizes. Larger engines are tougher, produce more power, slightly heavier, but that stat doesn't even matter anyway. It does matter, but it's negligible in effect. And you may have noticed that there's one FM300X, 30X Prowler Drive. Yeah, that's the stealth drive, it's terrible. I would never use this. It is useful, but you won't see me using one. But now that we've got engines and the primary armament decided, what else are we going to put on this thing? Well, we have a reinforced CIC, because that's good. That berthing compartment shouldn't go in the middle of the ship. I'm going to put one over there, and remove the first one. 
Because it doesn't actually matter if your birthing compartment gets hit. It's probably useless anyway. Actually, it is useless anyway. Excuse me. I got two micro reactors on this thing on the side mounts. Big reactors, micro reactors, and old drives can explode catastrophically, destroying the ship. I suppose we'll get back to that later, though. I'm not quite sure what I want to do with the inside yet, so I'm going to do some external hard points. Chaff is extraordinarily vital. And for now, I'm going to put a fire control radar on the front. Which is also extremely useful. Um, for this one, usually I would go for flak, but I've been having issues with flak recently. So I'm going to go for a repost based missile defense system. Reposts aren't exactly good, but their reputation is far worse than they actually are. Um, for one thing, chaff is an absurdly vital choice, so the question is often, do I bring chaff or reposts? And the answer to that is exclusively chaff. Chaff is absurdly necessary for missile defense it's always the best choice for missile defense. Because chaff can stop many missiles with one unit, while reposts often need two to stop one missile. However, I'm not questioning whether I bring chaff or reposts, because I already have chaff. I'm questioning if I bring reposts or another form of missile defense, probably lasers or flak. But you can see that we got 138 reposts. That's a lot. It might even be considered enough. Uh, I'd say not quite enough, but it's enough to stop anything short of a big missile dump. Which for a heavy cruiser rather than the battleship is a success. But now unfortunately I have to deal with the interior modules. I think I'm going to go for a parallax radar rather than the spyglass frontline combo I sometimes use. Parallax doubles as a fire control radar as well, but I'm probably going to leave the bullseye on for now. The bullseye is better at a fire control radar because it can lock things further away. Um, that's not actually true. The parallax can technically lock further away, but if the parallax cannot see the target normally, it cannot lock the target. With the bullseye, if it's within 9 kilometers and within the firing arc, it can lock the target. Up here I'm going to put an adaptive radar receiver to improve the um, sensitivity. Yes, the sensitivity stat of my radar to make it detect things better. In these three front modules I'm going to put ammunition elevators, which improves the rate of fire of my 450mm guns. And that leaves me with, I believe, two module slots. Indeed, two modules. And I will probably need both micro reactors, unfortunately. Well, a fourth ammunition elevator is, I would almost say, necessary. You generally want to amplify your primary statistics. For our last module, we have a choice between, in my opinion, mount gyros, which improve the traverse rate, elevation rate, and spread of a gun, primarily the 450s or another adaptive radar receiver. A track correlator is not a bad choice, but we have fire control radars already, so we don't need it. And um, this is almost pointless. This is cheap, but not as effective as a plant control center, and we don't need any recently. This is for energy weapons. This is useful, but Mm, almost useful, I think. It's a heavy cruiser, it'll have a ton of damage control teams, it doesn't really need these. This isn't useful. This isn't useful. This isn't useful. And this isn't useful. Um, 
There is occasion to use a supplementary radio amplifier, but not on a heavy cruiser. It'll overpower comms jamming better, but I don't think that's strictly necessary on a heavy cruiser. So I'm thinking it comes down to the adaptive radar receiver or the mount gyros. And I'm leaning in favor of the adaptive radar. See, these are 450s, they're not railguns. They already traverse relatively quickly. They traverse enough. But if I put a mount gyro in there to look, it's only plus 25%. It's probably not vital. Excuse me. But an adaptive radar receiver is not a bad choice, I think. So we've got modules left to do, uh, not modules, compartments left to do. I have a reinforced CIC here, berth in here, and a reinforced magazine here. Um, I'm going to look at an external spreadsheet for a second. Da -da -da. One mount, two mounts. And I have 600 rounds. 16 minutes is about how long my ammunition will last. Which unfortunately means I want another magazine. I could put a bulk magazine in here instead. And I just broke it. Okay. I could put a bulk magazine there instead. But the reinforced magazine is less likely to explode. So, another much smaller reinforced magazine. And to be brutally honest, this is going to be a one heavy cruiser fleet. And I'm going to fill up the second reinforced magazine, which can stow 300 rounds of ammunition. It is going to be 125 high explosive projectiles and 175 armor piercing. And we're over 1,500 points, and we don't have damage control teams. This is going to be a one heavy cruiser fleet. Could I make a two heavy cruiser fleet using this drive configuration? Absolutely yes, but that's not what this fleet is. Down here I'm going to put a rapid DC locker. They're kind of pointless. Well, they're not pointless, they're actually very important. Pointless is the wrong word to use. But there's no penalty if they get destroyed. I'm adding a backup CIC on the front, just for flavor, and I'm going to put another rapid DC locker on the front here as well. It's a big ship, so I'm going to put in both a small workshop and a damage control center to buff my DC teams, and then two large damage control lockers. So I have eight damage control teams, and the restores provided to number is bugged. So it's actually four restores provided because I have two large DC lockers, and to be frank, that's not enough. This rapid DC locker on the front is probably going to be shot out more frequently than this one, so I'm going to replace it with another large DC locker. And now I don't have enough crew to operate all systems. So that's a lie. We're going to put a reinforced DC locker there. I still don't have enough crew. Okay, maybe a rapid DC locker it is. Mildly unfortunate, considering we only have four restores. How many crewmen do we have left? Scrolling up to look at Manning. Four. We have four more crewmen. So I cannot put in another large DC locker. Unless I were to remove the basic CIC. A single reinforced is probably enough, I would think. But I'll remove that and put in a large DC locker there. I have 14 personnel left, 
So I'm going to stick a reinforced DC locker here. This gives me 12 damage control teams, which is below the radar. 11 normal repair teams and one flying repair team. They're called flying because they're fast, not because they have jetpacks. The interior of this ship looks like a modern warship and not a spaceship. But we do need some support ships, I think. Additionally, we have 3,000 points to fill out, so we definitely want some support ships. I will probably be utilizing reins for this, the frigates. And they actually need an FM-230 whiplash drive to provide enough speed to keep up with the heavy cruiser, which is unusual. And I already put a spyglass there. They're going to get the same two adaptive radar receivers the heavy cruiser has. And at this point, I have 450 watts left. And now I have 150 watts left. And what else am I going to put on this ship? Honestly, I'm thinking reposts and chaff. Predominantly because that consumes exactly 100% of my power supply. <laughs> the second reason is that this particular frigate is going to be in a formation with my main frigate, with my main cruiser. And I would like to have more missile defense than I already have. Now, I am going to put some internal modules on this. A small DC locker. A reinforced magazine for a bit of armor. And then remember that those consume power. There are other things I could put in here. Um, first, let's look at the CIC for a second. Intelligence effort 1, intelligence accuracy 30%, local tracks only. Same for the reinforced CIC. And then we're going to look at the, intel at the analysis annex. Intelligence effort plus 30%, intelligence accuracy minus 30%. That's good. That's a pretty good module. And I cannot fit a proper intelligence center on this ship. So I'm pretty sure this will boost the effort of the intelligence on the CIC, which considering this is a long range radar ship, and now I don't have enough crew for all systems. But that's okay, the first berthing compartment is free. With one module left, I think it'll be a rapid DC locker. Just put in an absurdly durable frigate with three damage control teams. Why not? Why not? And has a bullseye fire control radar because the range of both of the lock-on systems of the heavy cruiser do not exceed the range of the guns. And I would like to be able to fire at longer ranges accurately. So that's one support ship down. And why don't we bring in another frigate? I am probably going to rename some of these. And it's probably going to be themed around atoms due to the atom and lab. Names are randomly generated. There's a big old list of words, and the recent drama was over that the fact that the words were uh, not curated at all. But that's fine. They're curated mildly now. Most of the unfortunate words have been removed. This frigate I'm fitting out to carry electronic warfare gear, a radar jammer and a comms jammer. 
I do not need an illuminator on this ship because we don't have missiles in this fleet yet or probably ever. I am however going to put a missile launcher on it and I'm going to give it home on jam missiles. Jamming was recently changed and I would like some countermeasures against that. And for our last mount, it's going to be VLS-123, the Chaff and Repost Launcher. And unlike every other ship in the game, this is going to get a mixture in one VLS. Actually going to reduce the number of squalls and add four Thunderhead active homing missiles, so this has a little bit of offensive power. Essentially enough to swat one Corvette. Internally, there is a module, not a compartment, that I want, which is the actively cooled amplifiers, which increase the burst duration for my jammers. That's nice. And for my other module, it will be a... correlator. See, the two ships, two existing ships, they can lock onto two targets at once. One each. And the cruiser has three groups, so a track correlator will make things more accurate if I'm shooting at a third target. But, let's put a small and a rapid, and a berthing compartment. I think our last ship will be a Corvette. The new Corvette model. What are we going to put on this Corvette? It's going to be a Scout Corvette. And in some contexts, a Scout Corvette means a Corvette that um, has a spyglass radar on it. That's not what we're doing with this ship. We are going to give it 280 high explosive projectiles and 140 armor piercing projectiles. We're going to put a VLS-23 here with chaff decoys and two more VLS-23s on the sides with reposts, as I pay very close attention to how much this ship costs. Reposts are very expensive and often not considered effective. 50 points to go before I run out of budget. I have one compartment and one module to play with. This is a gunship, so the module is going to be an ammunition elevator, which costs 20 points. And I'm actually going to cheat a tiny bit. And adjust my ammunition level so that I have a 3,000 point fleet. Um, that has to be changed. I'm going to take my existing names and edit them to be atomic themed because that was the theme of the frigate which I kind of actually liked. Drop down menu is for destroyers and corvettes only and of course I get all of the interesting names on the fleet I'm recording for YouTube. There we go. Oh. That's a challenge. Mm. I 
forgot to put a whiplash drive on this. There we go, all fixed. This frigate needs a whiplash drive, primarily because both frigates are going to be supporting the heavy cruiser. And to support the heavy cruiser, they need to be able to keep up with the heavy cruiser, which a standard frigate is unable to do. Um, I actually have to rename this one as well very slightly. FF. E because it is an escort frigate. And I'm going to position this one in front of the heavy cruiser because generally the heavy cruiser will be going forwards. And I want the spyglass radar to be in front of the heavy cruiser so as to better detect things. This one on the other hand is going to be ahead and in front of the heavy cruiser. And it's going to be 300 meters away exactly. There is a radar penalty for being too close to a ship, and 300 meters is a little bit more than enough to keep out of that range. It is not directly below because chaff is deployed directly below, and I really don't want to be close to a chaff when it goes off. Because chaff attracts missiles, and that's bad. I still want this frigate to be close to the cruiser because jamming is directional. It is not omnidirectional on the target. Jamming only affects things that are in the direction of the jammer. Which means if I want to support my heavy cruiser with jamming, I need to be in line between the cruiser and the target. Best way to do that is to just be near the cruiser. The Corvette, the Corvette is just going to live out there somewhere. It's a Scout Corvette. It's got a 250mm cannon for making its word known, which should provide enough bite that it can defeat other Corvettes, while it also has a non-trivial amount of missile defense, which is very useful for being a Corvette because people like to fire a tiny few number of missiles at Corvettes to try and kill them. with a significantly non-trivial amount of missile defense, to be brutally honest. It's actually at the bottom. Uh, 46 riposte missiles and 23 chaffs, uh, which is quite a lot. Well, it's not that much a lot, but it's a lot compared to how much people usually bring. And, to be brutally honest, riposte's as a whole, are better than the popular impression of them as being useless, but not all that good on their own. Well, that's not quite right. Um, how would I say that? Repost interceptor missiles on their own are extremely effective. They are honestly too effective. They shoot down things that they shouldn't have to which means that they're less point efficient than they could be, and they're already very expensive and very point inefficient. Of course, I'm of the opinion that point efficiency doesn't actually matter. What matters is, can it do it or can it not? But, that's a bit radical compared to some of the people. Anyway, I might use this fleet in a video later. Might not. People watch this video who play against me, so, you know, can't really lie to them. Or, shouldn't really throw my hand. Um, I will point out on the heavy cruiser that you probably saw these CR-10 and CR-70 antennas. Go over to a frigate real quick. Anything that's not a heavy cruiser or battleship has a CR-10 antenna integrated. Which means that adding another CR-10 is just a backup. The CR-70 is mildly more powerful and more useful and if I replace the bullseye, because I don't have to set that up again, you can see that it has more transmit power, higher gain, and the same bandwidth. I'm going to put the bullseye back, though, because the bullseye is important. If we look at the heavy cruiser, not only does it have a CR-10, 
but it also has a CR75. I don't know if you noticed, but the CR70, which you could put on the frigate, had 1250 transmit power and 10 gain in decibels, as well as 500 of whatever this unit is in bandwidth. The CR75 is larger and more powerful still. And the cruiser already has an integrated backup antenna. So adding an additional antenna is doubly useless. Looking at the battleship real quick, it just has the big antenna. I still wouldn't put a backup on this because you have to penetrate the battleship's armor anyway. Battleships are, are very slow unless you put three FM-230 drives and an FM-540 on them, at which point they are actually faster than the heavy cruiser. They're less agile due to having a lower angular thrust to weight, but they're not that much less agile than a standard battleship. Just to go over the other ships for a quick second. The destroyer is a big frigate that can mount a spinal gun. Spinal railgun or spinal beam. If you're not using a spinal on a destroyer, use it as a missile boat. It's pretty good at that. If you're not using a missile destroyer or a spinal destroyer, don't use a destroyer. Vauxhall light cruisers are the preferred punch down cruiser or punch down ship. On paper, they look really good for missiles, and to be fair, they're not bad at it. But the intended role of cruisers is to, light cruisers, is to be fast and be strong. They are the strongest, fastest ship. They are the strongest, fast ship. And lore wise, they were actually part of the same competition that the Sprinter was in. As you can see, the Sprinter looks like a small cruiser. Which is very interesting because this is a 10,000 ton cruiser and this is a 2,500 ton Corvette. Which I just find amusing. Um, you can also see some common things from larger ships in the heavy cruiser, in the light cruiser. Drives, drives, but more importantly I'm drawing attention to the module slots on the corners of the core. These are also present on the heavy cruiser, and I believe they're also present on the battleship. They indeed are, underneath the radar panels, essentially. It's a common design feature for Faction 1 ships, which I think is interesting. It's pretty neat. The Corvette's pretty tiny. It doesn't have much in the way of internals. The frigate almost has that in the vertical flame. Uh, to briefly go over the ships I am using, sprinters are fast torpedo boats and also kind of stealthy. Frigates are frigates. They're very good missile ships and are very good electronic warfare ships. They're better than f corvettes, despite corvettes' smaller signature, because they mount a big, re a big reactor and actually have enough power to do everything at once. Otherwise, frigates are good missile ships. Um, all three of the sprinter reigns in Keystone are bad at gunnery because they don't have enough armor and they don't honestly don't have that many hard points. Um, the destroyer is the least bad, especially if it has a beam weapon on the front because those are short ranges anyway. But I wouldn't use any of these for primarily your primary source of gun firepower. Um, corvettes are useful for torpedoing stuff with a torpedo roll-off launcher. I don't use them like that. And I'm not going to on this fleet because I only have one of them. Torpedoes are extremely short range and extremely powerful. The extremely sh small signature of 2890, 2890.16, and the extremely high speed of 35 meters per second means that, yeah, this thing is pretty fast, so it can get close enough to deliver torpedoes. The primary uses of corvettes are uh, spyglass ships due to their small signature. Electronic warfare ships, again small signature. Torpedo boats. Now you can use them as missile boats. I don't. I would rather have a frigate. But, you know, whatever. Went over range, went over keystone. Vauxhall. 
Um, they make good gunships, I guess. They're not bad missile ships, but they're also not good either. Especially not compared to a destroyer, which I don't have on this fleet right now. But they can stack a lot of 250mm guns. That's pretty good, I guess. The heavy cruiser is nice. It's the fast heavy ship. I say fast, it's slow. 18 meters per second slow. Um, but it has a lot of heavy weapons. It's the 450mm cannons. You can also do 300mm railguns. Or a single beam turret. Honestly, this is almost a small battleship rather than heavy cruiser. And then you got the battleship, which is the battleship. These ships are absurdly tanky and are generally pretty slow, although I've been working on changing that. Battleships are pretty good. Battleships are probably better than heavy cruisers, I think. Gonna save this fleet real quick and show off one more fleet. Scroll all the way down to the Red Bird Squadron, which is in the R section. Red Bird Squadron. Here we go. There was an update recently that meant so that you had to click to actually upgrade things. It doesn't do it automatically. There's the balance changes. This is not the best missile fleet. This fleet only has 320 missiles. And you may notice that their naming scheme is all color is all a word for the color red and a bird. Um Yeah, that's that's them. This fleet is extremely powerful because it has five jammers, five illuminators, and 320 missiles. Essentially what happens is I point at an enemy, and I delete the enemy from existence. It is not a kind fleet to fight against. Because every one of these destroyers has enough firepower to destroy a battleship, and there are five of them. Missiles are very lethal. There are worse fleets, though. Uh, Maple Fleet 15, I believe? Yeah, Maple Fleet 15 is missile frigates instead. Not as many illuminators, not as many uh, jammers. More missiles though, 384. Um, 383 of them are gales, and there is precisely one thunderhead in the fleet. Why is there one thunderhead? Because with 384 gales, it comes out to 2,997 points when we usually play at 3,000 points. And the Thunderhead makes it come out even, even. Sorry. Just looking at the time real quick. Load fleet, and what's the last one to look at? It is Maple Fleet 16. This is similar to the Red Bird Squadron, except it also has less electronic warfare, less chaff, and less illuminators than that fleet, but it has 400 missiles. Anyway, that's ship design for you.